Welcome back guys. Today we're going to go through the 10 most frequently asked questions relating to EV chargers. So the reason we've decided to do this video is because I was actually talking to an electrician last week. He started asking me similar questions. He's never done EV chargers, but he's thinking about getting an EV charger installed later on. He's refurbishing the house. And there was a few questions that he actually asked me. And I thought, well, if an electrician's asking me this, a lot of our clients will probably be thinking the same thing. So at the end of the video, I'll go through the most important one, which is how much does it cost? But let's get started with the first one. So as long as you've got off street parking, so if you've got a driveway, you can have an EV charger installed. Now, if you don't live in a house and you live in an apartment, a flat, or anywhere along those lines, if you've got dedicated off street parking, so your own parking space where no one else can park, you can also have one installed there. Now, we do need to get the landlord's permission. There are other permissions we need to get, but as long as you've got dedicated off street parking, there's nothing stopping you from getting the EV charger installed. So this one is quite common and we do uh, get asked this quite a lot. So can you charge off three pin socket, a standard UK socket? The simple answer is yes. But what you need is a dedicated socket. So an electrician still needs to come around and put a circuit in to an outside socket. Then you need to buy, uh, it's called a pen device. So this is basically so you don't get an electric shock off the car basically. You then are looking at a charging time of 24 hours plus. So a lot of people, what tends to happen, they buy the new car and they get the, it's called a granny lead, and they just go, right, I'll plug it in and charge it at that. But imagine, imagine a tap that's just dripping, dripping water and you're trying to fill a bucket up. Essentially, that's what you're trying to do. So what you'll find is a lot of, a lot of people they buy the new car get the lead plug it in and then after a while they realize this is taking forever to charge so you can you can do it but by the time you've added up the cost of like i said the pen device the outside socket the insulation process by the time you've gone through all that process and then on top of that the actual charging times are so long it's not worth it in the end. In the end, most people end up buying a proper EV charging point. So this question is actually a bit of a lead on from the last question. So if I give you an example, a granny charger that we spoke about is about two kilowatts. That's the power it can provide. A home charger is typically around seven kilowatts. So three and a bit times more. Now on top of that, what we find a lot is just the convenience of it because if you decide to go and fast charge which are the rapid chargers that you get at the supermarkets there's some petrol stations doing them now there's always a queue so you only need to speak to uber drivers or taxi drivers and i found that out recently when i had to get an uber and when i spoke to the uh, uber driver and we were talking about electric cars I said, what's, what's one of your main issues? Where do you charge? And he said, well, he hasn't got an EV charger, but he goes, he always has to go to the fast charger because they drive around a lot. But he goes, he's always having to wait around at least 20 minutes, half hour, just to charge his car, just to get in the queue to charge his car. We think it is worth having the home charger because you can plug it in any time. And it's actually cheaper. It's the cheapest way as well because the fast chargers that you get are gonna cost you 70p onwards per kilowatt hour. Whereas at home, if you charge in the day, the average is around 20p per kilowatt hour. If you charge at night, which are some of the special tariffs, so you're looking at 5p per kilowatt per hour. And you don't have to go anywhere special, you can just plug it in, leave it in overnight. On top of that, the other side, the flip side versus the granny lead, the average car, you're talking seven to eight hours to fill up to its maximum charge but remember that's the average we'll go through a few cars in a minute so there's basically two type of connectors so you have a type one and a type two now majority of the cars are going to be a type two 
So there was an announcement in 2014 from the EU, which basically said from there onwards, they're gonna to have to make cars with type two sockets. So after seeing the pictures, I'll show you the socket as well. So this is what the socket looks like. And this will be, instead of your petrol cap, this is what's in its place. So what will happen from now on, most cars will be a type two. And even if you do end up getting a type one, there are conversion kits to change the type one to a type two. Let's talk about the home charger, how long it takes. So fast chargers are anywhere between 50 kilowatts and they can go all the way up to 350 kilowatts an hour. So they can vary, but the average time for them is around 30 minutes to charge your car fully. But let's talk about the home chargers, what most people are gonna have. So the maximum, you can get at home at the moment is a seven kilowatt charger. And that's setting aside if you've got a free phase supply, but most domestic properties are gonna be a single phase, which means we're looking at seven kilowatts. So the average is four to seven hours. So if we run for a few examples, so the Fiat 500E, you're looking at six hours to charge fully. The BMW i4, you're looking at 12 hours, and the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV, you're looking at 17 hours. But do remember as well, that as these cars go small, medium, large, the battery size is also bigger on each one as well. So the next question, we'll look at what sort of range it gives you. A typical charge, so seven kilowatts per hour on an average car, you're talking anywhere between 25 to 30 miles. So if you charge your car for an hour, like I said, on average, you're looking at it adding 25 to 30 miles. So that is enough to cover most people's journeys. Now let's have a look at the range on a full battery on the previous cars we mentioned. So the Fiat 500e, you're looking around 160 miles. The BMW i4, you're looking around 300 miles. And the biggest, which was the Mercedes EQS SUV, you're looking at around 350 miles of range. So remember, these are averages, and just like petrol and diesel cars, it depends how you drive it, you know, whether you've got the aircon going and various bits and pieces. But they're the basic averages, and an hour charge, like I said, adds between 25 to 30 miles range. So we did run through this a little bit earlier, but the cheapest way to charge your electric car is simply at home. Because as I mentioned, the average if you use a fast charger is you're looking at 70p plus. So it can end up being a big, big difference. The average in the UK from your home, you're looking at 20p per kilowatt hour. So you can see it's almost triple the amount at a fast charger. And now as EVs are getting more popular, what you're finding is the energy suppliers are doing what you would call off peak tariffs. So something between midnight and three or four o'clock in the morning, because electricity isn't being used that much, these suppliers are now starting to come out with special tariffs and they can go as low as 5p per kilowatt hour. So the cheapest way to charge your car is actually at home. So how long does it take for the insulation? Now the average insulation, we're talking four to six hours. So it does vary and it does depend because it will vary on what you need. Do you need a new fuse box? Do you need floorboards lifting to run the cable out? Do you need an isolation switch? So there's a number of factors that we got to look at, but typically it will take a few hours and that's it, no longer than that. So this is everyone's favorite one. How much does it actually cost? So there are a few variables. So things like, do you want it untethered, tethered? And like the previous variables I mentioned, which were the DB, do you need a new DB isolation switch? So I'll give you an average of what we charge. So there's four that we like to install. So you've got the Zappi and the Easy. Now these supplied and fitted 
you're looking 1300 pounds as a starting price so 1300 is a starting price for the zappy and the easy now you've also got the simpsons and partners and the anderson 2. for these the starting price is you're looking at 1800 plus so 1800 we hope that answered most of your questions. If you have got any more, please do get in contact. We're more than happy to help. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.